I'm going to compare my all-time favorite travel tripod, the Peak Design travel tripod, which I purchased back when it was on Kickstarter several years ago and has been my go-to faithful take everywhere tripod, to a new contender for the throne, the Freewell Real travel tripod. We're going to look at every feature side by side, compare the size, weights, heights, and everything you care to know about between these two tripods so you can decide which one is right for you. We're going to start off with the case. As you can see here, first of all, this one is a little bigger, but we'll come back to that. Just case design, both quite simple little cloth case design here. But this one, the Peak Design one, has a non-adjustable handle, which I've got to say, while it's convenient to just carry, you can't really throw it over your shoulder. Unlike the Freewheel Travel Tripod that does have a, what I'd call a more traditional kind of a strap, so you can actually get this over your shoulder if you want to. Little things like that sometimes make a difference. But beyond that, there is a neat little feature on this case. There are two little tabs on the side here, which you could use to clip onto a bag or underneath a backpack, a hiking pack, that sort of thing. So this design overall is quite nice, if maybe not quite as versatile. I don't particularly care for the branding on the Freewheel one. I really don't like to have big brands on my bags. This has it, the Peak Design just has its classic little tiny tab here, and that's it. Now you'll notice that there is a size difference between them. The tripod itself is a bit bigger, but also the case is just looser. It's squishier. It doesn't really fit as well, while this thing it fits like a glove. I mean, this is just snug. So case aside, let's get into the actual tripod. Right away, we see that the Freewell is a little bit bigger. And so this is, of course, a real concern. The size of the PD tripod will fit in just about any suitcase you throw at it. The Freewell, eh, it might not. Maybe it will, though. Check your suitcase. Let's actually check the measurements here. Instead of looking at specs, let's just see what it shows. We're going to call that 40, maybe 40 and a half centimeters, while the Freewell is rolling in at about 44 and a half centimeters. So a little bit bigger. Not a huge difference, but it does make a difference. Overall design aesthetic. This, this is a work of art. I, I'm not going to lie. When I first opened this thing, I was like, wow, this is a beautiful tripod. You think it's a tripod. How pretty can it be? It's pretty. It has a really nice, smooth design. It is nearly round in shape. It is designed to be basically the size of a water bottle the diameter of a water bottle, and it feels like it. It is just super smooth. The legs all kind of wrap around in this hexagonal, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, hexagonal shape to the legs, whereas, of course, the Freewell is your traditional round tripod. Like, not that there's anything wrong with that, but just the way that this folds up all nice and compact and smooth, it really is a thing of beauty. And you'll even notice the way the head is retracted in, the head makes it all nice and smooth, whereas the head of this sticks out like a traditional tripod. Now, there are some advantages to this head, so don't just disregard this, but this is real nice and smooth. Okay, let's go into a basic tabletop setup. I'm just gonna open up the three legs in their lowest standard position here and see how the heights compare. Now, in this position, we have a height for the peak design of 36 and a half centimeters, we'll call that. And for this tripod, we're looking at about 41 centimeters. So that is your minimum height at its standard setup. Now that said, the legs can spread out farther on both of these and the center columns can be removed, so it can go even lower. We'll take a look at that in a little bit, but just to see how the legs do go out, the Peak Design has a single stop out, so I can release it, go out one stage, so that's it, that's its two positions, here or here, whereas the Freewell actually has an extra stage in there. So there's its first stop, second stop, and third stop. So with that in mind, it might actually go a little bit lower, but we're going to find out about that. Let's talk about accessories. The Peak Design has its tool mounted in a slick little plastic case in here. This snaps in beautifully, and that of course is for tightening on the tripod play or anything else on the tripod that might get loose. Now, I don't know about you, but I have basically lost this kind of a tool on every tripod I've ever owned except this one. The way this snaps in here is really slick. It's really firm. It doesn't fall out. It's been beautiful. Now, the actual enclosure for this is the first part that usually falls off. It's not that you lose the tool. It's that you lose this part. But on this tripod, maybe just because it's wrapped up on the inside, never lost it. It's been there solid, nice and good. Now, 
With that said, over here in the free well, we've got a pretty interesting mechanism here. First of all, this is not falling off because it is bolted on. It actually comes removed, so you have to put it on yourself. It comes with the tools for that. But it is something you can add on if you want. It holds in your basic little Allen key with a little magnet in here. So it's you know probably not going to fall out. I haven't used this much, so I can't say for sure. But one very interesting feature on here is that it includes an air tag holder. That means that you can attach an air tag as I have here to your tripod so that if you do lose it, odds are you'll find it again. So that's pretty cool. Next, let's compare the head, which is a really, really important part of the tripod here. We'll start with the peak design. Now you'll notice that this does not have any kind of handles on it. This is not a video head. This is a traditional ball head, but it's not really traditional. First of all, you'll see that if you loosen this and you want to move it, you can't. You actually have to raise it up to be able to get any tilt out of it. So I'll loosen that knob and raise it up just a little bit. And now you have the ability to rotate that head however you like in here. So there's your ball head. Now, if you want to go vertical, you actually have to get it up quite a bit higher so that the head can clear the legs. And that's how you would go vertical on this tripod. There is no video panning head. There is no smooth pans. If you're doing video production primarily, this may not be a good choice for that reason. But as a still photography tripod, it's fantastic. Or of course, if you're not worried about doing video pans. So there's your basic head design. It is pretty much it. It's a ball head, but a little bit in reverse from the way you might have seen it before. This looks like a traditional video head, but it's not. It's actually a combination of a video head and a ball head. Check this out. So first of all, you have what appears to be a standard video head. I can pan, I can tilt. However, if I loosen this knob here, it also is a ball head. You'll notice here, if you look at that joint, that is a ball joint underneath the video head, which is honestly really, really clever. It's a great design because it means that I can lock this and now I have a really good smooth panning head. The handle here I wish extended. I have another tripod head from Small Rig where you can unlock, just untwist and pull this out. I kind of wish this had it. I was convinced that it did, but I kept twisting, it doesn't go. But I think that would be a really nice addition. But other than that, you do have a nice smooth head on here and, and it's smooth. I mean, that feels really good. I think you could get a great video pan out of that. If you want to go vertical with this head, you can, even though typically with a video head, you can't. This has a little trick because of the ball head maneuver. We can tilt it down like this and then rotate the plate so the camera goes vertical. Since we're talking about the plate, let's get into that. Let's go back to the Peak Design to start. The Peak Design has a double locking mechanism. You first unlock that, then push this to release, and the plate pops out. This plate will look familiar to anybody who uses Peak Design gear. This is the same plate that works with their shoulder clips. So you can clip your camera into here, go from the clip that's attached to your backpack straight into the tripod, which if you are a Peak Design user, then that's a pretty nice feature to be able to go back and forth. Once you put that back in place, lock it in and then apply the secondary lock and that thing is tight as it can be. By the way, there is also a spirit level at the top of the head there. This tripod head's a little bit more traditional in the sense that it has a loosening mechanism here to remove the plate, put that on your camera, off you go, put that back on and there you are. So pretty simple, pretty traditional there. However, this plate has a really neat little trick inside of it. If you ever wanna mount your phone on your tripod, this plate has a hidden phone holder. Check this out. If I pull this little lever up and then pull this out and this lever up, you now have something to hold your phone. Now, curiously, Freewell doesn't call this a regular phone holder. They call it like an emergency phone holder, which kind of implies that they don't expect you to use it all the time, but I, I don't know why you wouldn't. It seems pretty good. So I can attach this on here. So the same plate just goes sideways and locks right into place. And then to put your phone on there, just stretch that up and in place you go. Now, I would say this feels hard. Like it might possibly, even though there's pads, it could possibly scratch a phone without a case. I don't know that I'd be too keen on putting a phone without a case in here, but you know, your mileage may vary. Maybe you just be a little extra careful in there, but that's awesome. That holds it in place. Now, the Peak Design is not being outdone here. It also has the ability to mount a phone into it. It's phone holder is, is kind of over-designed in a really beautiful way. It lives in the column here. So if I kind of twist and pull, this pops out. And then with magnets, look at how smooth it just holds into place and pops back out. This is the phone holder. So you kind of open these two pieces up. You take out the plate that's in here, drop this in its place, lock that the same way. And now I can put my phone in there. 
So either one is fine. They both hold your phone perfectly well. This one's maybe a little bit looser. This is a bit snugger. But again, like I said, it feels almost like it might possibly scratch your phone if you're not careful. Anyway. Since we're looking at the bottom of the post here, let me point this out. You saw the hook that was on here. That hook is so that you can hang your camera bag from the bottom of the tripod. And I've seen that feature referred to as just a convenient place to put your bag. Sure, but it's so much more than that. Hanging a heavy camera bag off of the hook on the bottom of your tripod adds a ton of stability to your tripod. So don't just regard it as just a place to conveniently hang your things. It actually will add a lot of stability to your tripod. Now that said, if you're hanging a really heavy bag and this has a cheap plastic clip, it could break off. I've broken a few of them. But this clip here appears to be aluminum. I think all the mechanisms holding it together are aluminum. I've been using it for years, always hung my bags on it, never broken them. This as well is an aluminum hook on here and this is an aluminum pole. So I think either one of them are just as strong as the other. Now if I unscrew this one, there's a tool in here. Now what, pray tell, is that tool for? Well, this tool is for disassembling the center column. We can disassemble the center column on both of these. So let's start with the peak design and see how that one works. If I loosen the column all the way and try to remove it, it doesn't come out, a little safety thing in there. Same thing happens on the free well. This acts as a safety mechanism. But let's go ahead, let's go ahead and take this off, take this out. Now to remove the lower part of this column, it's a little bit tricky. You have to loosen the head, rotate it, find the hole at the top there, then take the tool that it comes with, pop that in and unscrew it. And there we have it. So now this goes back in and you no longer have that center column here. Why does that matter? Well, now I can go even lower with the tripod. Now I have my new lowest position. So let's compare that to the free will. To take its center column out, same thing, just pull that up. This one has a couple of screws here, which again, the hook has the tool for that. So we'll just loosen those up. And off we go. So now with that in place, dropped in, let's see how low she goes. And there we now have our lowest position for both tripods. So let's see which one goes lower. The peak design is coming in at 14 and a half centimeters while the free well is at 16 centimeters. So the peak design does get a little bit lower. It's a little smaller when it's folded up and it goes a little bit lower when it's at its lowest position. Even though this one appears that it should, it doesn't. And that's really because of the taller head on there. Now, both of these tripods can invert the head so you can mount your camera upside down and get it absolutely on the ground. So in that regard, they both have the lowest position. To see how that works, let me just do that real quick here. Like so. Now let's get into a couple of really important things about these tripods, setup speed and weight. I don't know why I left these to the end, but I did. So let's first talk about the Peak Design. This is the aluminum version, not the carbon fiber one. The aluminum version comes in at 1.56 kilos or 3.44 pounds, and the carbon fiber version is 1.29 kilos or 2.81 pounds. Now, the Freewell, on the other hand, comes in at just 0.9 kilos or 1.984 pounds. So it is significantly lighter. It is a third lighter than the aluminum version and still lighter than the carbon fiber version. Okay, so just get the carbon fiber one of these and that'll solve that problem, right? Well, there's the cost. We'll save that to the end. Let's talk about the legs and then see how it sets up and breaks down. The Peak Design tripod has four individual latches to release the legs. So to undo the legs, you have to undo all four of those and then tighten all four of them up. So that does add some time. Now, let's be honest here, it's pretty quick. And if I have it collapsed, I can close all four of them at once, open all four at once and off we go. But once it's open, you do have to close each one individually. Takes, you know, takes a moment, it takes a moment or two. The Freewell, on the other hand, has a single release mechanism. Just twist and off you go. That's 
pretty cool. It does make setup a lot faster on this. And in a moment here, we're gonna set up both of them from scratch and you'll see just how much faster it is. There is another really, really neat feature on the Freewell that I really like, and that's this. Monopod, you can't set this up now with just two legs. Monopod, so I can take the head off of here. And now, got a monopod. That's pretty cool. If you like monopods, that's a neat feature. All right. Future Joseph here. I was editing and realized I forgot about a really important feature on the Freewell that I don't want to leave out. Check this out. There are quarter 20 mounting points on the tripod. There's two on the base itself, on the legs themselves, and then there's another one on the head. So what are these for? Well, they show them as being for mounting magic arms. So if you wanted to, for example, have a, another phone or a light or a microphone or anything attached here hanging off of it, you can. But there is a caveat, and I think this is really important to show you. You can see in here that the hole is between the legs. And there's not a whole lot of space on either side of these. This is easiest to illustrate if I take the column out and I'm gonna take a nice big professional magic arm here from Condor Blue, love these things. And watch what happens as I screw this in. You'll see the problem very quickly. The spacing between the legs is not sufficient for this to screw in all the way. So you can see there's quite a bit of space in here that hasn't threaded in. It really is not in very far at all. And in fact, I would not feel comfortable using this particular magic arm in this position. Now, other magic arms may have smaller mounting points. This one has a slightly smaller one, but it really is going to give you the same thing. If I put this one in, you'll see as I screw it in that very quickly, it goes in as far as it can go, and that's it. And it just really isn't quite far enough. Now, that said, there may be some that have a smaller mounting point and that's fine, but the one that is on the head does not have this problem. So if I take one of these out, and you can see there it was about a turn and a half before that thing was released, so really not very far. And let's put the head back in. This can mount onto the side here and go all the way in, no problem. So now if you wanted to have your camera mounted with some kind of a magic arm holding, again, light, microphone, phone, BTS camera, whatever, that will totally work. It's a really neat feature. Just the two ones near the legs are a little bit limited in use. Okay, back to past me. Now let's see what it takes to set them up and see which one goes higher than the other. Now that we've got a little space, let's see how quickly these can be set up. We'll start with the Peak Design tripod. Now again, remember, I have to unlock all four of these simultaneously for speed, extend it out, and close them up again. We're gonna do this speed test, just going to the base height, not extending the center column, but then we'll extend their center columns and measure the total maximum height of them. So, are you ready? Let's do it. Done. Now let's go for the free well. Again, with the free well, it's a single release and pull, so this should go quicker. Let's do it. Done. So it is definitely quicker to set up, but you know, speed isn't everything, but it's worth noting. Now let's compare heights. The peak design is smaller, but taller. One, two, three, four, five segments. One, two, three, four, five seconds. Okay, well that is, uh, that's just science that I just don't understand, but there we go. So the peak design does get a little bit taller than the Freewell, even though it compacts a little bit shorter. Now let's see about actual maximum height here. Bring that all the way up and bring this all the way up. And once again, we are a little bit taller, less so, but a little bit taller on the Peak Design. The Peak Design is coming in at, we'll call that 153 and a half centimeters, 150, so three centimeters difference, not much. Well, there you go. What do you think? Which one is it worth for you? Oh, right, you probably wanna know the price. Well, that is a bit of a rub. 
The Peak Design tripod is better in many ways. If you are doing video, then you really got to look at the Freewell because the pan head on there is absolutely a must have if you're going to do any kind of video panning. You just can't do that on here. Weight of the Freewell, quite a bit lighter. If weight means something to you, then it does make a difference. But the cost. The aluminum version of the Peak Design tripod is 380 US dollars, nearly $400. The carbon fiber version of the Peak Design tripod is $600. The Freewell Real Travel tripod is $300. And because it's a brand new just launched product for the first two weeks, it's only going to be $250. So, ooh, that's tough. You could get two of these for the price of one of these, especially if you're looking at the carbon fiber for the weight and all that. So, mm, you know, that's a tough call. Well, that's what I'm here for, not to tell you which one to buy, but to give you the information so you can make your own decision. Let me know in the comments down below which one you think is the better value. And if you're gonna order one, please do use my link, that helps. But also, just let me know which one you got. See you in the next video.